right, so we're back with the Day of Mary podcast with uh, the Lord Manny. Oh. Right? Hello, Lord, today with an STL switch. <laughs> hey, right? hey, yeah. Look at this. If you guys see me a little bit puffy, it's because I do have another one underneath. Hace frío. Hace un frío aquí horrible. And it looks like we're podcasting from Colorado. Today we have Vanessa Casio, a TikTok star. <laughs> I think the podcast podcast is over. A guys. woman entrepreneur, uh, has super her own, super woman her own TikTok channel, multiple businesses, and like a foster mom, amongst other things. Okay, so we're gonna be talking to her a little bit today uh, to get to know a little bit more about how um, she runs her life uh, in complete chaos. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. It. Yeah, complete chaos. Yeah. But that's yeah. what we call her super mom because of everything you just every everything you just said there. Super one hundred percent. So 100%. I, I guess like. Um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, you and how, I guess, you got to where you are. Oof. Or, or where did it all start? Like, why is it that you wanted to go the route of helping kids and, and, and starting daycares, et cetera? Okay. Um, so, I started, I wanted to be a teacher. I always knew that's what that's what I wanted to do. So that's a calling. I, I went to school for that, actually, at Ferguson. Okay. I started with... Uh, shout like, out to Ferguson. Shout Falcons. Out, shout out to Ferguson. No goals too high. We're Falcons fly. There you go. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So, I had my daughter at... 19 as soon as i graduated from high school so that really put a damper in my uh you know pants Teen mom. but yeah. but, Teen dad. <laughs> but had it not been for her i wouldn't be where i am today so uh she i put her as i was in college for teaching she was at a daycare and um i started volunteering at a daycare teaching ballet and the owners were selling the school because they were splitting up they were divorcing so they came to me and they said, hey, you know, I was teaching at the time and, and they knew that that's what I, my long-term goal, that's what I wanted to do. Right. So they came to me and said, would you be interested in buying the daycare? And I said, absolutely. I was broke as hail. <laughs> I had no money. That's when everybody says, yes, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, I had no money. Um, I was a teen mom. I just barely graduated college and I had no idea, but I was like, sure, we'll figure it out. But that's the power of saying yes to something. Yeah. You know, like it's very I important. did not hesitate. I said yes first and then I figured it out later. That's, that's pretty much what I did. Always. Um, so that's how always it came good. about. I uh, worked my ass off for the next three years to pay back everything that I needed in order to uh, buy that business, but I did. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, we can all speak to that here, but uh, I myself uh, am a yes man. You know, like you throw any crazy ideas and things like that. It's like, all right, let's, let's do, do it. it. You know, right. I have no idea how. I mean, this very same <laughs> podcast started it's something similar to that with SBS Studios. Yeah. Um, and then Manny was like, listen, we need to start getting podcasts going. And okay, let's do it. And right. never have we done a podcast in our life, uh, probably to like a year ago. Um, it's not that difficult, you know, it's fun, but, uh, it does take work. As you saw, we were setting up for, you know, an hour and a half, you know, our producer Ben is out. Uh, well, we have our vice producer <laughs> shout out to our Justin here. But JDB. We, shout everything out. is figure outable and everything. we figured it out. Yeah. So yeah. when you have your producer, you know, I'll tell you from one day to another, you leave it to Poland. Yeah. Uh, you got vice producer JDB coming in. There you go. He, but he resolved. He, right. he resolved. He resolved. That's what makes resolved. you stronger. It does, and you learn something new. You know? But listen, I, I think that to that point, you know, uh, when you say that we did the podcast, why? Do, what? What was the? What was the thing behind us doing the podcast for these same things? Because we kept on always talking about our stories, and we kept on talking about everybody. That we, you know, we, we remember we started it with the STL meetings. Yep. You know, STL another shop. STL. <laughs> you start getting the merch already in STL. Wait, wait, wait. Pre-order now. We started because we kept on chatting of how, hey, how did you do this? How did you do this? And we said. Those are worthwhile things to be talked about. Yeah. Right. Because I think that's, you know, I've, I've always said, I think it's very important to everybody hear their side of the story because believe it or not, listen, there's a whole bunch of people that say, I don't want to listen to these. Let I me mean, not say the word, but you know, I don't listen. Don't listen. Skip right. us. You don't have to listen to me. I, I don't give a rat's ass if you want to listen right. to me or not. Right. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm doing this for people that are that probably in the same right. boat in the fact of saying, they're a teen mom. They probably think, oh, God, what am I going to do? You know, here we are. We're listening to your success story that we haven't heard at all completely. That I want to continue on that. But that is, to Moya's point, why we started this podcast. Yeah. You know, we started for that same reason. For people that do want to listen and probably some people say, man, how did you do it? To your point before we even started, right. how many people huh. always tell you, Vanessa, how can you juggle all the things you have? You have the daycares. 
You have, you're a mom of three. Right. You have other businesses. You have uh, two dogs. <laughs> The dogs, <laughs> dogs, the three dogs, a the husband. husband. Well, that's another child. A, that's another big dog. No, <laughs> that's a big dog. But anyway, at the end of the day, you have all these things, and you say, "How do you juggle?" And we're talking about the chaos. But it's to your point. Well, what type of chaos is it? It's controlled chaos. It's controlled chaos. And you wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have it. I, I function in, I function better in chaos. I thrive in chaos. Yeah, I'm I the same that's way. I tell you, it's organized it's chaos. Organized it's organized chaos. Organized chaos. You know? right. And if you, if I wake up and I don't see my schedule book. For the week, I think I'm doing something You don't wrong. know what to do. I'm like, right. what's going on? What? Or at least five phone calls missed from me. Yeah. <laughs> Over the weekend, <laughs> which I love. It's like, hey, listen, it's very true what someone told me once. I don't know who it was when I was much younger. You got to be worried when your phone ain't ringing. Right. And if your phone's not ringing, then you have a big problem because nobody needs you, you know? And when the phone does ring, you got to make sure you answer and respond to people. And Manny is always the one that one of the people that told me that. People have nowadays, and I get it, we all have um, ADD, you know? <laughs> we all have ADD. <laughs> and there's a lot of, like, I, I feel like one of the biggest problems is the communication. Like, so you can be communicated through WhatsApp, through DM, through email, through phone, through text. It just becomes overwhelming at times, you know? So you're kind of prioritizing, you're right? You're to the choir here with that. So I can only, <laughs> and so then you have 100 WhatsApp chats, you know? And then you start prioritizing on what's more important than the other, yeah. you know? But... When he was telling me he was back then, there was no mobile phones. There was no cell phones at that time. <laughs> You're saying the age that I have already. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> I mean, we have beepers. Oh, we have beepers. Okay. Then the brick phone came out. But when you were in an office setting, when I was in the office setting, you know, when I was 22, you know, you would go out to lunch. You had lunch. And all of a sudden, you get back and the receptionist had your little... You know, that little circle thing with your name on it. And you had, while you were away, little messages. I would get back and I had like... 14, 15 little messages. And then you literally came back, sat down, and get and the, phone, the phone and, you Make know, phone return call. every phone call. Now you have everybody with the fact of, like, you know, who calls an office? Right. Everybody calls you and texts him. You're not picking up. Hey, why aren't you picking up? I'm, I'm texting yeah. you. I'm calling you. It's like, it's like, it, it more or less something that you have to be like this. It's just make, you know, time yeah. even more proactive in the sense of people are just saying, no, no, pick up the phone. You know, what's going on? Yeah, and I think that's one of the hardest things. When you get home, you want to disconnect. Right. But it's nearly impossible. To disconnect, you know? it is. And, and tell me a little bit about, you know, your day-to-day, -day, you know. Oof. How do you start it? You know, how do you end it? Well, I can tell you that. End? It doesn't end. <laughs> okay. It doesn't end. But what's helped me through it, and I think what's um, continued pushing me to push myself more, to take on more, to do more, is I... I'm going to go a little bit against what you guys are saying here as far as like always answering that phone. Um, I have learned to that. I basically have reached my goals of where I need to be in my life, right? What I need, I already got, you know, I have a roof over my head. My kids are healthy. They're in a good school. Have my bills paid. Like I'm good. So anything outside of that for me is extra, you know? So if, if I get an opportunity for, uh, let's just say to open another school, which my third, that's exactly what happened. It kind of just fell on my lap. Yeah. If I feel like I can't handle it, then I'm just going to pop, you know, I'm not going to do it. Um, I felt like I could take it on. I feel like I'm doing great taking it on. If I ever feel like it's overwhelming me or like it's too much trouble, then I sell it. You know, that's kind of, to me, mm -hmm. I've, I've prioritized the fact that I am where I need to be. Anything outside of that is extra. And I feel like that's kept me very grounded and humbled in the sense of not always wanting to go after more and more and more and more. Because I feel like we sometimes lose ourselves in that and you start going after all the things and, and it's never enough. It becomes never enough. Um, and I never wanted to get to really that point. So I feel like that's kind of what grounds, you know, grounds me is I'm where I need to be. I'm happy where no, I, I like am. it. I like you it. Know? I, yeah. I was just I was going to push on that what you were just saying right now. I think that's. A lot of people may that will be listening to this and say, okay, but you know why? You said, I, I'm good. The next is extra. I really like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're probably saying, maybe the other people are saying, well, but why not take more? Why not take another advantage if you right. have something else, another opportunity? Absolutely. So, but I like the fact that you decided, right. you've decided I reached my goal. Right. So, I mean, do you think that taking more things will take away a little time from your other priorities, which are your kids? Um, so that's where I, like, I, I, I balance it, right? Okay. I feel like anything more that I take on, like I said, is just that extra for me. So I know that I can, like I said, I thrive in chaos. I'm still young. I can take on more now. 
if I ever get to the point that I feel like it's too overwhelming, if I'm missing my kids' basketball games, if I, yeah. you know, if I'm not able to attend their school concerts or field trips, if I ever get to that point, then something's got to give, you know? Something's got to give. You know, to that point, it's, it's crazy. Like, I feel like we've all been lucky to a degree to always be able to attend these things. Right. Most parents do not have they the opportunity to do stuff like cannot. that. To go to Spirit Week, to go pick them up from school early, et cetera, et cetera. Like, realistically speaking, even us growing up, my I got picked up from school at five. You know, I don't even know what, it, what, what, what I guess we're working and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And I got I got dropped off at school at like 6, 30, 7 in the morning and I had to just wait. But I was like, I was just going to say that. If yeah. you really go back to at least my parents, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my parents couldn't really attend everything. I mean, my father was, was working. My mom was the one really doing everything back and forth, you know taking me here, taking me there. So to your point, I mean, it's totally changed. I mean, yeah. and now you see, and I, and I see it also in my kids when, I, you know, and I'm a much older father, but at the same time, I see it now when I go to my kids' schools, there's more, you know, the fathers, you know, where would you see that years ago? You right. wouldn't see the moms yep. attend more stuff than the dads. Now you see even more dads more than the, dads. the moms. And that's the thing too, that as a mom, you know, it's like, I'm having a, you have to balance business yeah. and being a mom, right? So to me, and this isn't for everyone, and and I'm not saying that it's the way to do, it, but for me, my kids are my priority. So to me, it's kind of like if I can't be there for my kids to actually raise them to not be little assholes, <laughs> um, yeah. what's what's the point of it all? You know, I'm doing all of this, I'm building all of this for what? To leave it to who? To a bunch of kids that were raised by nannies and you know are jerks and and not kind, humble people, you yeah. know. So what what it what is it really for? What would I have done it for that? So yeah, and and talking about like you know raising kids, uh, I, obviously this day and age has changed dramatically with social media. Right. You know, like a lot of parents don't even know how to handle the social media side to it. Like I, I you know I had a daughter at, at a teenage age as well. She's now eighteen, about to go to college. Uh, very proud of her. She got her scholarship. She turned out to be a very good kid. No, you know, she's a tremendous kid. But um, social media worried me a lot. You know, and when she got the phone, there was moments that uh, it was a handful of years that. No, you still worry. Yeah. <laughs> that I was like, right. what is going on? You know, right. and then you want to kind of have that buffer of letting them learn and fail right. and, and grow up right. and stuff. And I'm OK with that. But then you got to kind of like it got to a point where I was like, trust, but verify. Right. So I was trusting her for ver verifying. And when I went to go verify. You almost had a heart attack. <laughs> I verified stuff that I thought was not happening. You know, yeah. you probably uh, said, "Why did I verify?" Yeah, no, it was. It was. Listen, it was one of the most crucial points I think. Grow, I was growing up, or me in, in in my relationship with my daughter in, in that case, because it, it's it was an awkward moment. There, you know, as a daughter, she's turning into a teenager now. Right. You know, so as a father, you don't want to see them grow up. But then when you see what they're talking about and Snapchat and this and well, that. I was like, wait a minute, this is not happening. And then it was, you know, the kid stuff, you know, right. that you kind of did, you know, right. but you don't want your kids to do, right. you know, like. Right. But at the same time, going to that, I mean, I'm going through that right now, you know, with those things, <laughs> Snapchat and the whole thing, and you really have no access to it because. It's right. It, right. it just, it's, you know, it, it disappears and erases. Yeah. It's not like. Yeah. But then you have maybe to what you did, you know, you know, give a little explanation, like, during pandemic, how you started recreating and what you what you you saw. became like a cool mom, you know. You I start... mean, but that has it's it's not as all it's cut out to be, you know? right? Especially but I'm saying, you have but a high you, school, you, she doesn't you, find you that cool. She doesn't find you cool. <laughs> no, yeah, Victoria does not no. find me as cool. She doesn't find me cool. She doesn't find me funny. Sometimes... Oh my god, I don't no, know. I think my daughter funny. finds me. Yeah, funny. yeah. You better find me funny. No, honey. man, my kid doesn't find me funny. Sometimes she'll even laugh. She's like. You're so cringy. That's not funny. I was like, well, you know what? Other people find me funny. So whatever. And I bet you she goes to school. And what, that, that, what do the boys say to her? I, and I stuff think like that, that that's the part. I think that that's what it is. Is that that her friends from school see my stuff, and then you know they. they that's your mom. You know? they, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like... They, she hates the story. I have this one story that cracks me up every time. She hates when I say it. But um, I think the turning point for her was when she walked into uh, she walked into history class once. And on the board, the teacher was having them write everything that they're thankful for. I think it was during like Thanksgiving. Oh God! And she says she walks in, and the board's filled with the previous classes and everything they wrote. And right smack in the middle, somebody wrote, "I'm thankful for Allison's mom." <laughs> and she's like, "What?" So when I went to pick her up, she's like, "Mom!" I was like, "Oh God!" So that's you know, it's it's. She well, that was one of the boys in the room that wrote that. that of obviously, course it was. They did they know who it was or they no? They love messing with her. Uh, she after found out who it was, and um. But it's just things like that, you know. It's it comes with it comes with the territory of having a yeah. young mom. I tell her that all the time. Yeah. Like you know, there's there's pros and cons to it. So I my mom was 19 when she had me, and 
I mean, we went to high school together. Yeah. How was it with my mom and all of you boys? You know, it was it was a constant back and it forth. Fun. It was fun. It was always fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was always fun. It was always but you know what? Looking back, high school years go by like so this. Fast. So fast. Look at Victoria. Just four years in high school, and just boom, she's already telling me. Oh my God, like I'm already going to college and like you're going to live a real life. It's scary. It's scary. scary. That's what it is. It's scary in this day and age. It's just that. And that's to go back to to why I say, you know, I have have, I've been blessed enough to be present. Right. Because we do have those parents that unfortunately can't. They can't be there for everything. They can't just call off work and be like, hey, you know, my kid has a field trip today. I can't come in. And I've been blessed to be able to do those things. So why would I to me? It's like everything else can wait. So I have, a, I have a, I have a, qu- a good question for you, right? I, my sister moved out of town. Um, a, a lot of my family, a lot of friends that I know were out of town. Mm-hmm. And the number one thing is, I don't want to raise a family in Miami. Talk about how it is or the pros and cons of raising a family in Miami. And, you know, I, I've, I was one of those people once, too, that was like, I just want to get out of here. I want to raise my kids elsewhere. But I started traveling more, which was like a big deal for me. Um, and you're going to see the same problems everywhere. You know, it's, you probably said I'm better off staying in Miami. I'm better off staying in Miami. <laughs> and I think here's um, more opportunities too. That's what I, that's yes. where I see it the most. The biggest you know? thing is the opportunity. Yes. So if if you want, you know, kind of just your regular, you know, calm life, of, yeah. you know, the nine to five, and well, there's nothing home, wrong with that. Absolutely not. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. I think that that works for a lot of people. It's just not something that I think will work for me right now. Like I told you before, I thrive in chaos, and I'm married to a man who thrives in chaos. Yeah, we don't. So well. yeah, so it's kind of a thing where it's like for us, I think the hardest part is just um, when you're raising kids here is just who you surround them with. Well, you know? but I think it's what that's a good point though. earlier too that the sense is like you know you have so much opportunity now, especially what Miami has become. Right. I mean, Miami was, but Miami is and it's going to be. I mean, you look at it everywhere; everybody's just coming over everybody's here. Everybody's coming. I mean, you just saw the whole. You see the whole news of Sylvester Stallone now. Yep. You know, telling the girls, "Hey, we're packing up. <laughs> we're going Florida. To yep. You know, like why? No more LA. No more LA. So you have all these folks. All this whole international world is in Miami. So there's so much of opportunity for anything that anybody's mm-hmm. looking for mm-hmm. in the industry of music, in the industry of acting, in the industry of whatever, of, of real estate. Miami's a place yeah. to be. And that really happened post-COVID. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. with for, for, you know, several policies that were going on in other states, like big cities and stuff, you know, LA, New York, et cetera, people were just kind of tired of it. Well, I mean, said, but we could say it. I mean, yeah. we're closed over there. Open, you know, yeah. we're open. We're open right. here. You know, and so was Texas. Yeah. So we're ready to work. The people that we're ready were to open, work. Everybody, everybody right. kept on, you know, and everybody said, I want to go over there. Yeah. Right. And then you came over here, you took that little that little flavor because the good thing with the Miami has, like I always say, it's Miami, USA, the Miami floor. It's a, it's a melting pot. Yeah. So when you're here, you have a cesspool. You have everything oh, that you have that taste and you see that people, to your point, there's so much, there's so much business to be done yeah. there's so much business. a lot of life here too there's a lot of life there's a like there's just a lot of opportunity for for even you know my own until they decide what they want to do right my kids they if they want to go you know live off on a farm somewhere go you know if, yeah. if this is but i want to equip them to be able to survive too well, because we're hispanic they can stay with us because yeah. my right well my you know my dad lives in north florida and in the middle of nowhere and my brother is i have a brother that's much younger than me and I see him and myself, like, we, I, I compare us to, and it's so different. different yeah. It's so different. If I were to bring him over here and drop him in the middle of Miami, he's, he's like, what not going to know what to do. But you know what? You, you bring up something, me thinking when I was younger. There's something very different in, I think, all of our parenting um, personalities and the way we do stuff than, I think, at least when I, when I was raised and I did something bad. I got slapped up, hit with the belt, <laughs> oh, you know, you put to, put no in the more. bed. <laughs> Nowadays, I have never spanked my child, you know. Right. So, and, and I talk to a lot of other parents, and they don't like. Do you think that has an effect on the way that they grow up or respect adults, or not really? No, man. I just think it's different times. I just think it's different times. It's the way that you raise your kids. What I see a lot now, and I see it on a on an early education level. So I can just imagine as a teacher, is you know, you come to parents and you're like you know xyz johnny's you know misbehaving or johnny's throwing something or, mi hijo no mi hijo no hace esa cosa and you see that so much now it's like it's never the child's fault and there's no accountability what's right. happening is you're you're raising a monster you know and then these are the kids that you see now and now in days that it's just like they have no respect for authority no respect for their t- teachers middle school and no, high school middle it. school wow. and high school teachers now i have no idea oh, how they do it let me hats off that is no, Quite no, frankly, absolutely. the hardest job to have because I, these kids don't 
shit. 100%. I mean, to be a teacher, let me tell you, I keep on saying it here. Hey, governor <laughs> and everybody, you got to put all teachers' salaries Absolutely. at oh. six figures, Absolutely. man, because I keep on saying, you know what it is that your kid, to your point, leaves your home and they're responsible all day until three o'clock mm-hmm. or whatever time for your child. I mean, think about it. And then you say you come home, and sometimes I know you guys are talking about in my time. Yeah. I mean, listen, if I did something wrong in my house, my mother would just say, What's the best word? Wait till your phone. Wait till your dad gets home. Wait till your dad gets home. And that was like, You're freaking out and stuff. (laughs) Is what? You would be like this. And there was no sense of saying, Oh, yeah, come down here. My time in high school, you did something bad? It was a paddle, brother. <laughs> you will go to the vice principal's office, and it was a rocket ball paddle. It. And it worked. And right, and right. That's it. Look how successful you are. Oh, I didn't get paddled, brother. I didn't get paddled. I didn't get paddled. But all I'm saying is is that, you know, you would get home, and you would say, when your mother say, what's your father gets home? He, your father would say, how I seen or whatever. Even though nowadays, sometimes when your kid's like, down on the road, you know, a little bit like, what? You'd be like, you like, what? No, 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 no. Listen, you want to say, let I me just get, let me, let me get real a and start looking yeah, at him like this, yeah. and that's it. Well, I always think, like, if that happens, I'm like, you have no idea how oh, lucky you are. Oh, sure. You have no idea. Like, and honestly, I enjoyed those one because you feel like, I feel like that creates character, and you become a coachable person. Like, you know, if, if you can get some type of, like, punishment like that, you respect the authority a lot more. You know, it doesn't matter where they come from. I always respected my elders. I always. feel like it's just a thing of being taught too. Like the little things like that. Like I said, even starting at an early childhood, when they're three, four years old, if you see your mom telling the teacher, you know, no, my kid can't. Cause I've had, I have four year olds. These, I have mouthy four year olds that wow. they'll say to me, my mom says that you can't do this. Or my mom says that you can't. That's tough. So, you know, it's like at that age, that's what you're creating. You know what I mean? Yeah. In my house, my kids know at the end of the day, the teacher's never wrong. To them, I tell them, yeah. you sit, you're quiet. I don't care how what how many points you need to make. You respect your right. teacher. Let Even if me you know that she's it. wrong. Exactly. You we'll shut your it. mouth and we'll deal with we'll it. Deal with you it. respect your teacher. And that's just not something that, that's really taught anymore. And seeing so many kids, you know, you've probably taught in total. How many kids have run in total through your school? Oh my gosh. Thousands? Um, over how many? How, how long has it been? Matt, three, uh, three it's schools. been since 2012. 2012. So yeah, 13, 11, 12, years 11 years now. 11 years. So do you have a knack that you can see the way a mom is raising a child more or less and know this is probably going in the right direction, this is probably going in the wrong direction? Behavior-wise, yeah. What is like the biggest things that you notice? Number one, I guess well, accountability. I, what you were saying right earlier. now, as you just talked about the way they talk. Yeah. At four years old, my mom says you can't say that to me. I'm so like, you would say that. That's- I think the accountability. You always kind of see those parents where it's just like, no matter what you tell them, it's never. Yeah. It's never them wanting to help the child's behavior. It's always just like, oh well, what are you? What's the teacher doing wrong? Oh, but why did they do that? That's my favorite. You know, your kid just hit somebody over the head with a block, and they're like, oh, but what did the other kid do that made him do that? That's that's always my favorite. Once once you give me that response, I already know where this is going, and I have to like you know and turn you know in a different direction with it because I know that nothing that I say is going to matter. But to be that. honest, I'd be hypocrite right now if I if I if I wouldn't be that person. You're too. that parent, you know, because no, <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying because there's two sides to that, and and I agree with you 100. percent But at that moment when you're like, you know, see so right. your child, and your your child's like. You know, it was, it was Eddie, yeah. you know, if it was Eddie, I really right. believe it was really Eddie. <laughs> but at the same time, to... you know, you, you have that doubt, right. but to your point, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand the teacher. You got X amount of kids. Right. They're looking at each, you know, one way or the other that the other day, I'll tell you one quickly. I'm picking up my son. Teacher comes to the window <laughs> and I just see her coming to the window. Oh God, what did he do? And then she tells me, no. And today, twice, I turn around, and he was misbehaving. And then, MJ, what's wrong? And he goes, you know, I told him, you know, she turned around at the same time that you were talking to the other person. Who was it? No, it was so-and-so that was poking on me. I go, well, but you know what? It was your luck that she (laughs) turned around at that moment, and she caught you. So you're screwed. 
you know, but to your point, I mean, he's here trying to tell me, no, it really wasn't him. I go, well, but you're the one that got, you right. know, you're busted. The one that got busted. <laughs> I, yeah, you're the one that I, got busted. You sometimes you're but the one that, that also busted. builds character. It does. You have yeah. to understand. I got busted know? on the way to Many Grand times. Night. Oh my <laughs> on the way to Grand Night, going to Magic Kingdom. Have you heard that story? The whole bus is mooning the principal's bus, and I'm the one at the end that gets busted. And they put me in Mickey Joe. He sat in Mickey Joe for our entire grad night. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to get into that show <laughs> right now because that was you know, I would ask Justin, but I wonder why he was the only one that got, but they mooned, found his moon. <laughs> only the people I know that uh... can really assert to that. But anyway, but at the same time, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> it does not surprise me one at all. But, not, all right, so um, now let's see the other side. I'm sure you see a lot of kids that oh, this always breaks my heart, even when I was thinking about it. Like the kid of the parents doesn't show up yeah. and they always go late yes. or they never go to the events. Like, do you notice uh, when you see a kid that you feel like is maybe getting neglected? Do you pick up on certain uh, behaviors and you understand, absolutely. OK, this is going the wrong direction? Yeah, absolutely. There's no. And, and I've said this a million times before. There, there's no one way of handling any behavioral learning. And no child is the same. None. I have three kids and they are all completely different. And I handle them completely different when i tell you different like i have one kid who doesn't give a crap about grades that if he gets anything lower than a c i gotta drill him and and take away his ipad and punish him i have another kid who if he gets a c he has a complete meltdown, meltdown yeah. breakdown and i have to be now be the mom to be like it's just a grade it's not a big deal who cares it's you have to be so it's the same way with you know these kids they all they're all different they Balance. all come from different you know we have kids that are dropped off at 6.30 in the morning and aren't picked up till 6 p.m. at night. Yeah, you know? They're there. But those um, are probably working, you know, yeah, working those parents. Are those are working parents. parents so or, so, so it's, their grind. So we do. You know, it, it's it's a balance of understanding, you know, nature and nurture, right? Nature. So you need to understand where they come from, yep. what they're getting at home. Are their parents going through a divorce? Are there, you know, what are they, what are their, what's happening at home that they're coming to school with these behaviors? And then you have to handle it as such, you know? So do you go into that? Like, do you ask the parents, Hey, what's happening at home? You know, do you ever get to that point or I've never, we don't ask the parents, but I will tell you, I don't know why parents just are an open book with us. I mean, I've had parents They'll walk... come and tell you their stories. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you want to go home. And, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we, we, I tell people all the time, like with the teachers, we are not only teachers to the students, but we end up being therapists to the parents. Psychologists to the we parents. We end up being psychologists to the parents. So many times I've had parents come in and sit in my office and just cry and tell me about wow. all their problems and what they're going through. And I, I'll answer the phone and I'll have parents, you know, asking for information on the school and what's your, you know, aftercare policy and on what if on this day. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, I, I need I need you to know that it's just that I'm going through a divorce and then they just it's like yeah, a floodgates yeah. open. So especially you, they feel like you're gonna identify with yeah. them and so it's ways. yeah. So it just becomes one of those things where you just you know you be you, you have to wear all the hats and and that's where I you know go back to you need to know when to shut it off because if not you know you don't have any time for you and and in this field it's majority women, right? In in early childhood, very rarely do you see men. Um, so I, I don't just live by it myself. I tell my teachers, your kids come first, your families come first, you know, work a second yeah. because I can't expect them to come to work and essentially be, you know, the guardians of other people's kids all day, but then neglect their own, you know? So if yeah. their kids are sick and they call in, I have to figure it out. If they're, you know, if they have a field trip to go to with their kids, they know I won't ever say no. It's all your employees. My employees. Yeah. yeah. So the same way that I want to be present for my kids i i put that across the board to my employees because you know it's not fair you're ra like a, 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 sometimes they're raising these kids they're all they're with them more than they are their own kids by the way there's a whole so, bunch of people now asking if there's a position available in uh, no. <laughs> vanessa's uh, uh, companies are probably yeah. saying uh, is she hiring <laughs> it's hard being a mom and being i want to work there and working full-time is hard work you know it's it's just it's tough well so i think that one of the biggest questions that i you know i think the people out there were <laughs> What does it take then to get to where Vanessa is? What does it take to do what you've done? What is the best advice that you can give those females that are, how can I say, maybe contemplating the fact of do I do I do I do that junk? Do I do I open my business? Do I go on my own? You know, you 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 have all these successful businesses. What is you know your mentality of how to persuade them to do that jump 
just do it. Just, just do, it. do it and figure okay. it out later. All right. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to fail as opposed to not doing it. But you know what? That has a lot to do with people's personalities. Yeah. There's people who are extreme risk takers right. and the people are conservative. Right. But we talked about that earlier. Too. Yeah. There's right. people There's people that are okay with, like, you know, I work a nine to five, which is nothing wrong. Yeah. Right. You know, you work in, in, in a governmental job and you're perfect. Right. Your retirement, which is fine. Yeah. But then you have that other person that says, I, I, I just can't be that. But you know what? To that point, sorry, people glorify being an entrepreneur. Right. Right. All the time. You see it everywhere, you know. But it is the most difficult thing that I think you can take on most. because you're always Absolutely. on 24 seven. It's more responsibilities. You, you kind of thinking I'm leaving nine to five to you're working 24 seven. Now, um, you have to put everyone ahead of you. You got to talk about scaling development. Um, you have to be available. It's just, it's on and the list goes on. And I think in order for you to be able to do it, you have to thoroughly love it, have passion Absolutely. for it, and embrace it. And we're like, you want to, you want to do it. You, you have know? to yeah. love what you do. Yeah, to yeah. be an entrepreneur, you also have to think about, okay, wait, hey, how much do I need to live every month? Yeah. You know, so maybe this month is okay, but the next month is a little bit, you know, tight. You have to figure it out when you're in yeah. the five. You say, okay, this is what I make, and that's it. This is it. You know, so and, it, and it you're really only differs. worried about yourself when you're wearing a nine to five. When you're an entrepreneur, you have other people's yeah, everybody likelihood. Everybody, yeah, absolutely, everybody's you know livelihood. I mean? so well, that and, and um, I think you kind of like if you don't enjoy it, you won't. You no, won't you get far. You have to love what you do. You won't get far. Absolutely. I mean, you have to love what you do. It's always been known that you have to love what you do, and that you would. I always say you will go very far yeah. when you love what you do. When you love what you do. Like, you don't I, feel like you work every day. I do not feel like I work yeah. every day. I mean, I, I, I've I, tried. I've, I've invested in other things, and I'm like, you know what? Let me try dabbling in other things that maybe aren't such a big responsibility. Maybe where I don't have to have, you know, yeah. 20 employees, and, and I can get to a point where I can sell the schools and just do something. And I tried it, and it's like... It's like dragging for no, me. No, no. Things that I'm usually, like, on the go 24-7. Now I'm like... All right, so like social media. In like <laughs> in like thirty six months, you grew a TikTok account called Vicasio on social media. That's kind of like a mom, like a family account to so. over a million followers. Okay, you've had several videos that went twenty eight million that went completely viral. We've right. seen them everywhere. Huge. What <laughs> would you say is your advice to getting like campaigns and big contracts with a lot of the companies that I've seen you do? Um, like you know, you've done stuff with Walmart, HelloFresh, etc. Man, you know, I, again, I've just been blessed to just be able to be myself. You know, they they find me and they reach out to me just because they like my contacts and content and it's just authentic. I don't, I'm not commercially, it's the first thing that I tell them. When I have these brands reach out and they try to give me a script, I tell them no. I'm like, listen, I, I can't do a script. Absolutely. So either you're going to, I can give you this and you're going to take it or find somebody else. I can't sit there and be like, this is what we're selling today. And it, I, I can't, it doesn't come yeah. from me. I'm not... That person and social media was just something that blew up. I wasn't trying to make it, but now that I have it, I'm just trying to mark, use it, you know, to further the other things, my Airbnbs, my, you know, things that I have going on. Um, but it's tough and there's, it's tough influencers. I, my hats off to them, people that do it full time because it's a very intrusive, yeah. um, time consuming you're, it's very, it puts you in a very vulnerable place. It's just like people. Haters. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how they got the haters. Listen, people just expect that because you put out, yeah. you know, a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Of, they know you. They, they, not that they know you, but that they're entitled to everything that goes on in your life. That's a good point. Right? That's a good point. We had Kiko here last week and we put a couple of videos up of some, you know, restaurant, um, Reviews. It reviews and other that stuff like that, uh -huh. and he reviewed, and people were saying you have zero taste. You have uh, going Correct. going crazy yeah, on him, go, and he would respond perfectly. He would be like, "Thank you, bud." Uh, he would be, like, uh, "I'm glad that that's how you captured in a 27 clip of you, my life." Yeah, you have to have a backbone. Yeah, really, you have I tell to. people oh, but, that all the time. But again, this is why I always start the podcast that I can. I don't care if you want to listen right. to us or you want to listen to us. Right. If you want to listen to us, you're. We are people here just relating the norm of a right. daily life of how we see it and how we act within this world. At the end of the day, whoever wants to like, you know, take that advice, you take it with a grain of salt. And if you don't, if you don't keep, want to take it, moving. keep it moving. Do whatever the hell you yeah. want. But it's really hard for some of these people to keep it moving. But that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying. But, you know, when you have Kiko here and the fact of listening and giving his and giving his two cents on what he tasted, why not? Right. Because I'm one of those people that I will listen. You tell me, man, I went to this restaurant. I didn't like it. I'm still going to go because I want to try it. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, All right. Yeah, so the yeah. last thing before we go, you said something earlier, the Airbnbs. Would you be willing to give the people at Day Miami a weekend getaway at one of your Airbnbs? Shit, way to put me on the spot. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I will. Okay. Yeah, of okay, course. So Vanessa, We're not editing that part. We're not editing that. She did say yes. <laughs> We're going to have a nice giveaway, a weekend getaway to one of Vanessa's Airbnb properties. Great, cool. Well, That's awesome. I like that. All right. And guess what? You're going to have some STL gear inside. This yeah. That's good. And I have a big I have a big, a big Airbnb idea coming up. I like You're going to like it. it. I know. You're, You're always full well, of big you, ideas. You can share it here. And I got to say I'll shout share. out. I'm going to share it. Shout out to me. Ryan, uh, her husband. He's a great friend. He plays with us on the Ademai basketball team. Three-time champ. So for <laughs> sure, he's worried that season. STL is short. He's the STL. Three-time champ. And I got a game with him tomorrow. The finals game. Well, we're starting the playoffs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm happy we did this. I think it's fabulous. I want everybody out there to follow this empowering, <laughs> spectacular woman. She is like Manny, but in a woman body. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told them the first thing that they met. <laughs> she has much better hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that I do. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. you guys, thank you for having me.